So I just want to talk for two or three minutes, maybe five, about the monotone convergence theorem uh, and why it might be useful, why it might, why it might give us the tools to analyze sequences that we might not otherwise know kind of how to handle. Um, one of the ways of defining sequences that we haven't really dwelled on too much in this class, but sometimes you do in a course like Calculus too, um, is it's pretty common to think about a sequence defined recursively. So a recursively defined sequence. And the way that these work is we specify, let's say, the first term in the sequence. Let's suppose that my first term in my sequence is 2. So not Sn, but S1. So the first term in my sequence is 2. And then I define all of the subsequent terms in my sequence in terms of the sequence terms that came before it. Oh, that was a messy sentence. Let me try that again. Uh, we define each of the elements of the sequence in terms of those that precede it. Okay. So if we know what the first term is, then we use that first term to define the second term. So maybe one way of doing that um, would be to say, let's take 1 over S1 plus 1. So in this case, that would be one-third. And then I define the third term in the same way in terms of its previous term, 1 over S2 plus 1. Okay. So S2 plus 1, that would be one-third plus 1. That would be four-thirds downstairs. And so then this becomes three-fourths. S4, 1 over S3 plus 1. So three-fourths plus 1, that's going to be seven-fourths. And so this becomes four-sevenths and so on and so on. And so we define the n plus first term of the sequence as 1 over the nth term plus 1. So these two pieces of data taken together, this formula, which is called the recurrence formula, and this formula, which provides us with the first term of the sequence, these two together form a recursively defined sequence. And here we see the first four terms of it. So here's the question. Of course, the question I'd like to ask is, does this sequence converge? Um, if we were to try to use the monotone convergence theorem on this example, we would have to verify what two pieces of information in order to be able to apply this theorem. Right. We need two things, both to be true, in order to apply this theorem to, to show that this sequence converges. We would need to show that it's monotonic, and we'd need to show that it's bounded. Now, just looking at the first four terms of this sequence, we can see one of those two is not, in fact, satisfied. Which one? The sequence is not monotonic. From the first term to the second term, the value decreases, right? S2 is less than S1. But then from the second term to the third term, it increases again. S3 is bigger than S2. So right away, for this particular recursively defined sequence, we don't have monotonicity. And so for this recursively defined sequence, we won't be able to use the monotone convergence theory. Um, what about bounded? I mean, even though we can't use this theorem, why don't we also talk about that second criterion for this sequence? Um, can you think about why this sequence might be bounded? Or how could we show that it's bounded? What might a bound for this sequence be? So zero on the, on the lower side, I would agree for sure. All of these terms look like they're going to be positive. There's no way to create a negative out of a positive just by adding one and taking a reciprocal. Right? Um, so we know for sure that zero is going to be a bound on the low end. What about the high end? That's the tricky part. Do we think that this is, sequence is ever going to get out of control? What's the biggest it could possibly be? Maybe two? I mean, at least for the first few terms, that's kind of the biggest number that we see so far. Um, but in order to show that it's bounded, we would have to show that for all n, that this is true. So let's just quickly try that out. One of the things about recursively defined sequences is that they lend themselves very well to proofs by induction. Because in a recursive definition, we always have kind of a base case, 
built in right here that we're told explicitly what it is. And then we also have this sort of inductive case that tells us, given any one of our elements, how to find the next one. So that sets it up very nicely. It yields very readily to a proof by induction. So let's just try it. Proof by induction. And I hope that we've guessed an upper bound correctly. If we haven't, then that'll come out in the proof that we're about to do. Um, so proof by induction, what would our base case be? Yes, yeah, right. So the base case is the case where n is equal to 1. It's the lowest of our natural numbers. And in that case, s1 is equal to 2. And is that, in fact, less than or equal to 2? Sure. All right. So our base case is satisfied. Base case is almost always the, the easy part of a proof by induction. So what comes next in a proof by induction? The yeah, the induction step. So we'll first write the inductive hypothesis, which says, let's assume that Sn is less than or equal to 2. And then we want to show, what do I want to show? Yeah, but not just the, not the whole sequence. We're doing a proof by induction here. Yeah, we want to show that the next term is less than or equal to 2. Right, so that green thing is what we want to establish. But this is why recursive sequences are so great to use in induction, is that we can immediately replace Sn plus 1 in this with an expression that has Sn in it which is great, because most proofs by induction that you do in courses like number theory or math 180 or whatever, most of those proofs are challenging because to get from the n plus first case back to the nth case that we have an assumption about, um, it takes little tricks, it takes algebra, it takes all kinds of you know, weird you know, parlor tricks to get from there to there. But for us, in a recursively defined sequence, the definition of that recursion gets us exactly there. Sn plus 1 is in fact equal to 1 over Sn plus 1, by definition. But we've assumed that Sn is less than or equal to 2. So if I replace Sn um, in this um, by 2, here's the challenge. What inequality symbol can I put here? Yeah, so I'm a little bit stuck if I try to do the inequality this way. If I put the greater than or equal to, I had because I end up with a greater than or equal to there, uh, which is not what we were looking for. Because um, here's the here's the problem with this particular recursively defined sequence is, if these SNs start to get really small, then there's a chance that their reciprocals could get really big. So that doesn't seem optimal. We don't want these reciprocals to get really big. Uh, instead. Here's something else we can do. Instead of replacing Sn by something which is bigger than it, why don't we replace it by something which is smaller than it to get our inequality going the right way? What do we know for sure that the Sn's are greater than or equal to? Oh. Zero. Uh -huh. So this piece is going to come in and save the day. Because now that I've replaced the Sn's by something that's smaller, now the fraction on the right is bigger. But what is 1 over 0 plus 1? And is that less than or equal to 2? Sure. Therefore, by induction, this recursively defined sequence is actually bounded. And the last comment that I'll make about this, because we're a couple minutes over, um, is that we may not have needed to use induction for this particular proof. What's the giveaway? How can I tell that induction was not actually necessary in the proof that's written on the board? Does anyone see it? When the chips were down, we didn't actually use the inductive hypothesis. Right? If you don't use the inductive hypothesis, chances are you're not actually writing a proof by induction. If that had been the key, right, if this, using this assumption had actually given us the inequality we wanted to, then yes, absolutely, this is essentially a proof by induction. But we didn't use that at the end of the day. We used greater than or equal to 0 instead. So probably we didn't need 
any of this stuff in the middle, we could have gotten away with just writing something like this. For all n, Sn plus 1 is equal to this, which is less than or equal to 2. Done. So we didn't need for this to be a proof by induction. But either way, we were able to show that this sequence is bounded. Since it's not monotonic, we can't use monotone convergence. But in other examples of recursively defined sequences, we can show, in fact, both of these claims are true using a proof by induction. And establishing both of those claims to be true will guarantee, then, that this sequence is convergent.